Welcome to On The Fly College Edition, a podcast presented by Playfly Sports. I'm your host, Gene DiPilippo. Playfly Sports is the full-service marketing and media company bringing digitally enabled innovations to the sports industry. Welcome to On The Fly. I'm your host, Gene DiPilippo, and our guest this week is Pat Hobbs, the very successful Director of Athletics at Rutgers University. Pat, great to have you on our show. Great to be with you, Gene, as always. As always, thanks. Well, Pat, you've had some you've had some great successes. You've done so many good things building on, you know, but you came you came up into this. You become a very successful athletic director, but you came at this from a different way than most of us. And there's a lot of young administrators out there that need to know there's not, there's more than one way to the top, but take us from college, if you would, up to the present time and tell everybody about your story. Cause it's really, an, it's really amazing. Yeah. It's funny you say that Gene, because uh, pre COVID uh, I would give uh, typically one lecture per year in some of the sport management classes. And, you know, somebody would ask sort of, you know, describe your path. And I said, well, I could tell you my path is probably not the path you're going to take um, <laughs> since you're already sitting in this class and you already know what you want to do. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, got, in college, I knew I knew very early in life I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and so I uh, graduated college, uh, went down to Chapel Hill for law school. And in law school, I quickly discovered I wanted a life in academia. Uh, and I, I went up to a, one of my professors and I said, I think I want to do what you do. Uh, and she couldn't have been a greater mentor and sort of describe the path into joining a faculty, which I was able to do about five years after entering the practice of law and no intention on law school administration or administration at any type. I love being a professor, love doing the research. Uh, and then a little bit of a financial crisis hit law schools and I became the associate dean for finance at, at uh, Seton Hall University School of Law which then fast forward led to me becoming the dean of, of the school. Uh, during that time as, as uh, associate dean, uh, we had a changeover in coaches in our men's basketball program. Uh, and um, the president of Seton Hall asked me if I would head to search, which, you know, it's like I grew up a sports fan. Um, you know, sort of student athletes always ask me, they say, Mr. Hobbs, what, what, what sport did you, did you play? I said, I played them all and excelled at none. Um, so, uh, that's how I'm, I'm where I am now. Um, but uh, I ended up um, getting involved in a search which brought Tommy Amaker over to, uh, to Seton Hall um, and uh, went back to the law school, became dean of the law school. I did 16 years as dean of the law school, but got, kept getting pulled back into the sports arena. Uh, one, uh, I guess it's now 12 years ago, another coaching change at Seton Hall uh, I headed the search there and ended up bringing Kevin Willard, um, who's had great success at Seton Hall. Uh, but I also ended up chairing a um, what was called the Downtown Core uh, Redevelopment Commission uh, in Newark, which led to the construction of the Prudential Center. Uh, and uh, through that, I ended up uh, working with the New Jersey Devils pretty closely. And so my life has been sort of... Uh, the, the, the word I've used with students in classes is serendipity. Um, and so, uh, you know, another way of putting it, a um, good friend of mine always used to say, you got to take the cookies when the tray's being passed. So um, uh, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm stepped down as dean of Seton Hall Law School. Uh, I'm with the Seton Hall basketball team in Charleston, South Carolina for the Charleston shootout. I'm on the golf course uh, with some folks from Seton Hall. And uh, the general counsel of Rutgers calls and says, we're thinking of making a change here. Are you interested? They had called a couple of years earlier and described the process that I did not think was going to be a successful one. Uh, and so I had bowed out. So I asked at the time, so, well, what's the process? And they said, you know, you're the only person we're talking to. Uh, and that's how I ended up at, at Rutgers. So from sort of being in college, loving sports, uh, with no interest necessarily or no sort of goal of going into athletic administration. Uh, it just sort of happened by um, happenstance, serendipity. And, and I'll tell you, one of the things, there are many things that attracted me to the Rutgers job. But the two times that I was involved at Seton Hall in sort of fixing something, 
uh, I, I stayed to the point of fixing and really did, then went back to my day job and really didn't get to enjoy the fun part of it when you see teams starting to have success and mm-hmm. your student athletes starting to have success. So um, one of the things that attracted me to it, as I said, if we can get things going at Rutgers, and I was pretty confident we could, um, this time I'd stick around for the success uh, and, enjoy, and enjoy the journey. You know, they always say, enjoy the journey. Um, and journeys are hard, um, but that's what makes success when you start getting to it all the, all the more sweet. Yeah, it does. And, you know, as I look back on my career, when I was younger, Pat, I'm not sure I enjoyed the journey as much as I should have. I wish I'd had more confidence in myself and in God um, that, you know, I was so driven that I don't think I enjoyed the. Well, I know I didn't enjoy the journey as much as I could. And, you you know, I mean, you're an athletic director now. You know what? Um, what you have to deal with every day. You have to enjoy the journey. Otherwise, it it, it just eats you up, doesn't it? There's, there's no question about it. And sometimes, even if you are intentional about enjoying the journey, um, you know this better than anybody. You, you sort of have that great win, right? And the next morning you come into your office and there is a problem waiting for you. So, <laughs> so um and, and I look and I go, I couldn't just get 24 hours. I just couldn't get 24 hours to sort of soak this in. Um, and uh, so you, you do have to. And it's it's hard to do it, but be, it's hard to do it because of the nature of the job, right? Because there are always fires. Um, I don't care how well uh, an athletic department is running. There's always – there's fires. There's always challenges. There's always the deal that you're trying to get done, right? There's always the program that you're trying to fix. I mean, what, you know, people ask about dif- difference. You know what? Would you ever want to be a general manager uh, versus an athletic director? Well, one of the things that makes the role of general manager easier is you got one team, right? You got one team. When you've got, uh, my father used to say about kids, you're only as happy as your unhappiest child. Well, you know, if you apply that to the world of sports, you're only satisfied when you think you have every program going in the right direction. Um, and so you enjoy those sort of individual program achievements. But uh, and, and one of the other sort of great things about Rutgers, right? So we're we're in the Big Ten now uh, eight years, right? So and I, in that eight-year period, I think I've hired 15 head coaches. And I've been able to say to each of them, one of the great things about being at Rutgers is we're only in, we're only in the Big Ten for a short time. So you get to establish all the firsts as a program, right? First, con- first regular season championship, first con- conference uh, tournament championship, um, and uh, and that's fun. So you know you have to you attract a certain sort of person like that, but and, and then telling them enjoy the journey, right? Like uh, you know Steve Peichel done a phenomenal job, and uh, we've had some big wins this year, and as soon as that win is over. One word comes out of his mouth, and it's the next team we're playing. Uh, so his, you know, and I'll stop him, um, you know, after the great win against Purdue on our court um, uh, with Ron Harper hit that great last second shot. Uh, you know, he's right away he's thinking about the, the next, uh, the next uh, team that we're playing. I said, Steve, Steve, stop. Just for this moment, we're going to sit here and really enjoy this right now. Um, and uh, he laughed because it is hard to do. It sure is. Hey, Pat, you've seen all kinds of leaders in attorneys and college presidents and just so many different people. What are some of the characteristics that you think that uh, all of those great leaders had? What are some of their characteristics? You know, um, I I get been asked that question uh, and I've sort of refined my answer through the years. And part, part of it is being in this world of athletics. And, and I think you'll agree with me when I say this. One thing you must be able of do, to do is to make hard decisions. You have to be able to make the hard decision. It's easy to you know, enjoy different things and everything else. But I, and I ask that to people who say that they want to get into this world. And I say, OK, well, let me tell you something. When you have to fire a coach, you're changing that coach's life. You're changing the family's life. Now you, you're hiring and you're making somebody very, very happy. But every time you have a coaching change, you know this, Gene, better than anybody. right? You're affecting 
family, right? Anytime you come into a situation, um, I think like the, the state that Rutgers Athletics was when I arrived um, under NCAA review, there were lots of things going on. You got to make hard choices. And so that to me is, 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 is number one. Um, number two, do things the right way. Um, do things the right way because in the end, it all comes out. So integrity uh, is important. Um, respect. Um, it's easy when you achieve a certain level um, to stop thinking about the guy who sweeps the floor right, or the person who comes in and empties your garbage in your office. If you don't have respect for folks top to bottom, um, try to get to know their names. Not easy necessarily in our business with turnover and everything else. But, you know, the ability to make hard decisions, uh, doing things with integrity, uh, respecting respecting people and, and sort of being uh, civility, uh, which is becoming a lost thing in our society today. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things I've always tried to do, and I've done this since from the time I was dean of law school, is uh, regardless of whatever might else be going on in my life, when I get out of the car and the door closes on the car and I walk into the office, I try to have a smile on my face uh, and project uh, enthusiasm, um, energy for that day, um, because people watch you, you know, you're, I don't care what, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a platoon commander, or whether you're an AD or a president of a university, you're the one people are watching. They watch the facial reaction. And if, if you come in showing, uh, that, you know, something's bothering you, everybody's whispering, right? And so, right. Um, so to me, those are sort of essential ingredients. I think there are, there, there are probably others as well. Um, I think positivity is really, really important. Um, and that's one of the things that first message when I came in uh, to the rack, it was the rack at the time, now Jersey Mike's Arena, and we had the whole staff sort of assembled after the announcement had come out. And I said, you know, we've been doing a really good job digging a hole. Digging stops today. Everybody speaks positive about Rutgers. Everybody's pot. We're, we're going to. Uh, you know, if, if any of my team hears me say this, they're going to laugh because they're probably so tired of me saying this uh, at this point. But I said, day one, I said, we're going to write the greatest chapter in Rutgers athletics uh, and, and believe it because that's what we're going to do. And we believe that we are now um, well on our way to writing the greatest chapter uh, for Rutgers athletics. So all, all of those things are, are important. Um, and, uh, and, and I, I tell you, there are people who I've had conversations with about leadership roles, who at the end of it, they say, you know, I'm not sure that's me. I, I appreciate you being frank with me about the things that you have to do. I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Maybe sort of what I'm currently doing um, makes more sense for me. Yeah, very well said. You know, Coach Lombardi was always one of my idols, even though I never met him, Pat, but you use the words um, respect and kindness and courtesy and all that. Coach Lombardi said, I don't have to like all the players on my team, but as their leader, I have to love them because love leads to um, loyalty. It leads to teamwork and the absolute respect uh, of the dignity of a person. And as you said it, we've lost some of the kindness and some of the love uh, that exists, and not just in athletics, but in a lot of areas. And I hope that as we go forward, people will follow your lead and, and, and think about love and courtesy and, and all that as they, as they go about leading. Well said. Well said, Gene. Pat, you are faced with making tough decisions all the time. You've got football and basketball. You've got all these sports. Um, people don't realize it, but we really, we rarely get a day off between, you know, say August 1st and, and April 1st. How do you balance life? What do you do to, you know, to get away? What do you do to take your mind off of it? Do you walk? Do you run? Do you play golf? What do you do? So, you know, it, you're 100% right. I mean, basically, it's August 1st, and it really now runs through. You know, we have we have two lacrosse programs. They play in, through, you know, you're hoping that they're playing um, Memorial Day weekend and, and after. Uh, you got baseball and softball, which which run late. Um, you get the rowing championship. So you really don't get a day. Uh, you, 
your seasons are not done until mid June, right? right? So what I try to do, and <laughs> so um, I do not believe I strike balance. I don't. I don't achieve balance, and I think in the role these roles, you you're not going to have balance. What you have to do is you have to love what you do, um, because you're going to be you're going to be there all day Saturday. You're going to be all day Sunday. Um, you may have eight events over the course of a weekend. So you better love what you do. Uh, and then you got to find pockets. So I, I, I'm about finding pockets. So I always look forward in the calendar um, and I enjoy the game of golf. My index has gone up steadily uh, with every passing year as a day. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, um, and that was like my sabbatical year, which, uh, um, I ended up taking the, I was on sabbatical. I ended up taking the Rutgers job in November and, um, there, there went the, uh, the efforts to, to finally get down a single digit handicap. So I'm not sure I'll, I'll ever see that number. Um, so what I do is I look for a little, my, my wife is a working lawyer. Um, so it's, it's hard um, to find those little pockets, but when we can project out and say, you know, we play Ohio state on Thursday night and I don't have to be at the women's basketball game until noon on Sunday. Uh, let's find a spot. Let's go play a little golf somewhere. And we do try to get away. Uh, and if you stay home, you go in, um, you go into work you, or, you, or you sit down at the computer and you start doing things. Um, we don't, I don't do enough of it because uh, we've been building, we've been building, we've been trying to fix things. Um, and, you know, the business side of what we do also consumes a lot of your time and you'll end up do, doing a lot of that even on weekends as well. And then there's the interaction with your board members, your donors, right, alums, um, you're there with with the phone that we have now, right? You're always available via text or email or voice. Um, and so I don't know that you can achieve balance. Um, I think you achieve balance when you decide I don't love this anymore and I want to do something else. And then uh, but I think it was uh, Nick Saban yesterday uh, said, you know, he's never going to retire Um because he, he doesn't want to enter that empty abyss. I'm, I'm not sure it's an empty abyss, <laughs> but um, you do these jobs. You're busy. You are busy all the time. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have three grown children, um, but even getting to see them uh, can be difficult. Yeah. You know, I've often said that uh, when you become an athletic director, uh, there is no balance. It becomes a way of life. It's not a job. It's a way of life. And we're lucky and then our wives get involved some and that's where we see them and our children come to the games and they, exactly. they are big fans and that's where we get to see them. But it's a, it's a real family affair. That's for sure. Well, and, and to your point, Gene, on that, uh, on the day I took the job, I said, you know, yesterday I had three children. Now I have 703 children. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get it too. And, and of the 700, um, there's they're between the ages of 18 and 22, not like your older children. Oh, oh you, you know, I, I will share it. And I don't think you'll mind it during the interview process. Um, somebody said, you know, Pat, we just want the embarrassing stuff to stop. And I said, I said you have 700 18 to 22 year olds. The embarrassment is never going to stop. We're just going to try to keep it to a, a smaller level, a lower level of embarrassment, because these are kids. And, you know, my kids, uh, they didn't play sports in college. So uh, they were not under the, the media uh, microscope. And, and today with social media, um, you know, the, the it's a horrible thing. You know, if you were to ask coaches today, what's if you could get rid of one thing, what would it be? They would pick up the phone and they would say this. And not because people talk to each other, but because you have – Folks who nobody knows on social media passing judgment on a student athlete's performance or whether they've done something else, whether they've taken a knee or um, uh, promoted something. or And, uh, and, and the, this comes at them so hard that, um, you know, it, it's 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 hard. So I, I do. I worry about that as well. Yeah, yeah I do. You know, I talked to one coach, Pat, and. Um, he took the telephones on game day uh, because, um, you know, as the players come in and they, if they're hurting, they get something or whatever. A lot of players are going to the phone 
and going to social media and seeing what people were saying about their first half performance. I mean, that's the worst thing you could do. So yeah. you're right. The, the tremendous pressure on these kids today is really something. But Pat, what advice would you give to a younger Pat Hobbs at the start of his career? Go into finance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I mean, we sort of touched on it. Um, you, you gotta try to achieve more balance, um, particularly on your way up. Um, but it's hard to do that, right? Because we all have goals and aspirations. And if you aspire to be in any of these jobs, and I'm not just talking about athletic administration, but leadership roles, um, it all begins with hard work. Um, and there's no substitute for it. Um, and so um, I would try to tell myself to enjoy more, get to the beach more, play a little bit more golf, eat better, uh, get more exercise, wear sunscreen. Um, and I'd probably, uh, you know, my, father, my father had an expression, you can't put an old head on young shoulders. So no matter what I would tell myself, it would be the same thing when my dad tried to tell those things to me. And he would say, he would, he would literally just sort of wave his hand. He goes, ah, you can't put an old head on young shoulders. <laughs> Your dad was a smart man. He was. For a guy who didn't graduate high school, he was an Irish immigrant. Uh, my parents came from Ireland in 1959. Uh, and I probably quote him every day. Yeah. You know, he had a PhD in common sense. He certainly did. And that yeah. is probably more important than a bunch of degrees. Yeah, he got it. He got that from the University of Hard Knocks. Yes. Yeah. Um, Pat, what what is has been some of the what are some of the most rewarding things that you've experienced being an athletic director off of the court or the the fields? What what has been some of the the most rewarding things for you? So I'll, I'll, let, me, let me start with um, on, on the field in the sense of, you know, the old Tom Ricketts quote, I think it is, um, hire good people who hire good people and let them go to work. So it is um, hiring coaches is an off the field uh, effort, right? Um, and I, I talked about, you know, those are, if you ever get comfortable firing a coach, then you do something else because uh, you, you've, lost, you've lost your way. Um, incredibly rewarding when you make the right call in terms of the coach you hire. And then you watch that coach build a program. Um, and I've been fortunate now to um, hire, um, I think 15 coaches here, here at Rutgers and both the coaches who were here when I got here and the coaches who I've hired um, are all building on that because off the field, um, we've started to provide them what they need in terms of resources. So you can't just have good leadership in your programs. You have to have the, you know, people talk about facilities and everything else. I remember at a early AD meeting in the big 10, an AD um, who everyone would know sort of stood up and said, I, you know, I worry sometimes that we're replacing perfectly good facilities with these new facilities. And I raised my hand and I said, uh, we, we don't have any of them. <laughs> We don't have a basketball practice facility. We don't have a gymnastics facility. Uh, and, and I could sort of go down the line of what we didn't have. Um, so I'm very proud of what we've accomplished to date on the facilities front. I think we have one of the best basketball practice facilities in the country now. It also accommodates our wrestling and gymnastics program. When, when the young women that are in our gymnastics program came into their new space, which is a top five space in the country, and then they saw their locker room. Some of them started to cry, which I did not know until that moment that they had been changing in a public restroom. So for oh, pride goodness. and for competition, they were changing in a public restroom. I mean, think about that. You're in the Big Ten, you're Rutgers University, big public university. Um, and so we've managed to do big projects from a facility standpoint and smaller locker room renovations and things like that. The impact that has on those young people um, you, you you can't overstate because you see it in their faces. You see it in their faces. And what it says in their faces is Rutgers is committed to my success. So that's that's been enjoyable. Um, 
love, love, love working with our alumni, getting, um, getting to know them, uh, people who are passionate. Um, what, what I uh, said early on meeting um, all these folks, I would hear certain stories repeated over and over again. So somebody asked me, Sir Pat, you know, among your goal, what are your goals uh, here at Rutgers? And I said, uh, one is to eliminate the word long suffering from the alumni vocabulary. Uh, and we have managed, I think, to do that on many, many fronts now. Um, you know, making our first NCAA tournament in men's basketball in 30 years. Uh, our women's lacrosse team went to the NCAA tournament first time in 20 years, won their first ever game in the NCAA tournament. Um, so working with your alumni, communicating your vision, and having them then buy into the vision, right? Because they have to say yes. And, and particularly the early donors who said yes after having seen a lot of blueprints in the past, a lot of renderings in the past, you know, we've, we've all had them, right? And But somebody's got to say yes so that that first building can get built. The, the, the RWJ Barnabas Health Athletic Performance Center, which houses the basketball, wrestling, and gymnastics programs, was the first new building built uh, for athletics in Rutgers in 40 years. And you think about what our competitors were doing during that period of time. Uh, so that opening, seeing the kids go into that building and knowing this was their home, then opening the Rodkin Academic Success Center, which uh, I think is, uh, you know, if you ever come visit it, uh, as many have come through it now, they say this has got to be one of the best in the country. And I it think is it, one of the best in the country. I, I, I've seen it. So you've seen Great. it. You've seen it. It's, it's and any impact that has on the academic side where that's open 24 seven to our 700 student athletes. And I love, I drive by it after a basketball game or wrestling co contest. And it's a lot of glasses, you know, and I love seeing all the bar tops and the booths and everything filled with students studying. Uh, and I know they're, they're there late into the night. Um, and then that's sort of the very best part of the job. And I'll end with that is, watching the progress of a 17 or 18 year old kid arrive at campus and then who they become by the time they graduate. And I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention one because she is our fourth um, Wayne Duke postgraduate award winner. And that's the most prestigious award the Big Ten can grant to a student. Uh, there's one woman and one man in the conference annually who get it. Uh, and we're in the conference now eight years and we've had four uh, Wayne Duke award recipients. Wow. Yeah, it's fantastic. And Gianna Glatz, Gianna, uh, it was our field hockey goalie. Um, she was all American and everything. I remember her when she arrived at Rutgers and she was very quiet. Um, uh, obviously good athlete, good student. And to watch her over four years, five years become the leader that she became. Uh, and just this warm, wonderful young woman uh, who will now go on to great success in life. Uh, that's that's what you find most rewarding in this job. Well, that's a great answer. Pat, as an athletic director, we have huge teams. We have people, associate ADs and deputy ADs and coaches. And talk a little bit about your team because the success that you're having, uh, not only have you hired good coaches, but you've hired really, really good administrators as well. Thank you, Gene. And, and that is, is, you know, we call it the team behind the teams, right? And uh, we do have great coaches, but you've got to have great people in your facilities department. I mean, it's been during COVID, right? Uh, in your training room, right? I mean, think about the amount of testing and everything we had to do. So making sure that their their um, physical needs are are addressed. You know, your 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 nutritionists, your docs, your trainers but the folks who run your facilities, the folks in the business office who get things processed. You know, when we went to the Gator Bowl this year, you couldn't find an airplane. So my business office is scrambling and we ended up taking three different planes to get everybody down uh, to Jacksonville, Florida. So across my team, I feel incredibly fortunate. Um, they've all bought in. They believe that uh, we are together writing the greatest chapter in Rutgers athletics history. So you know, folks will give me credit, and, and I say that all credit deserves it goes to my team um, because I'm not the one sort of executing on everything. I may say I think this is what we should do. This is the vision, but that vision was created with my team, and so um, I couldn't. That's another sort of most rewarding part is walking into buildings, uh, or going to events, or standing on a sideline 
and you know, senior electrician there, senior facilities guy there, senior compliance folks, all who are supporting that team, all who are your team behind the team. And you know, if you don't have a good team behind the team, it's a miserable job and you got to you got to do something else. So I feel very, very lucky. And this is an opportunity for me to say thank you to all of them. Well, that wraps up today's On the Fly. I want to thank our guest, Pat Hobbs, the Director of Athletics at Rutgers University. Those of you who are listening, I'm sure that you gained a lot, a lot of knowledge uh, from Pat. We're out of time on this week's On the Fly College Edition. I'm your host, Gene DiFilippo. Thanks for your time this time, and we'll see you next time.